Yeah, so, well, I certainly experienced that when my health broke down. And the reason for that was that I, I not only did I get sick, my life fell apart because I couldn't do anything that I used to be able to do. I couldn't listen to music. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't think. I, I, I couldn't do any of the because everything that I had done was really was um, complex and difficult. All the things that I engaged in. And what I did realize was that that left me vulnerable on a certain front because if I lost my, if I wasn't at in peak peak health, let's say, I wouldn't be able to do those things. And so, I mean, that's why I'm walking now, for example. You know, I said I walk six miles a day and I do that every day. It's very simple. And I played a lot of ping pong and I've always liked that, but I never played that much, but I liked that. And um, there, there is some utility in having things around that are rewarding and, and good for you that are less complex. Um, I would say, though, that with regards to the conflict between, let's say, you know, miserable wisdom and happy ignorance is that there's there's different forms of rewards to be found in different places. You know, you can think about this even in terms of personality. One major personality dimension is extroversion. And the reason for that is that we have a, a pleasure circuit and activation of the circuitry that's associated with extroversion and drugs like cocaine and amphetamines activate that circuit but there's another personality dimension which is openness and openness is the creativity dimension and there's pleasure to be derived from that as well and that, so that's philosophical exploration and and literary experience and i suppose when you go to a movie you you experience a blend of those two things especially if it's a rather complex movie so there's different forms of engagement or pleasure to be found and some of them are more akin to happiness and some of them are more akin to to meaning and sometimes they come into conflict but but i think all things considered they they work best when they're when they're working together and i i do strive diligently to re, and i think that this has really been brought home to me you know look i couldn't sit down i literally couldn't sit down for almost a year and so I lost the ability to sit down. I had fantasies for hours of being able to sit by a fireplace and just not move because I had this condition called akathisia, which is, I learned how, how valuable it is to be able to sit down. And now when I sit down and nothing is happening, I, I'm taking stock of that and noticing what an un unbelievable gift that is. And, it is really useful to maintain your ability to see what you have that you've taken for granted because you can lose you can lose everything you can lose things you don't even know you have i have no idea that you could ever lose the ability just to sit down but you can uh, i wouldn't recommend it so i'm more appreciative i would say of of simpler things than i was I'm more appreciative of other people than I was. Um, I'm probably more grateful, all things considered, than I was. Um, and hopefully that will continue developing. I, I have no contempt for happiness. You know, I, I tell people, don't pursue happiness, pursue meaning. And I think that's true. But if happiness comes along, it should be welcomed. And if you're ever somewhere where that's happening, you should notice it and and be grateful for it and enjoy it. And that's for sure. I'm told that my overanalyzing is double-edged sword, but I'm suffering from being this way. Yeah, well, you're probably, you know, high in openness and maybe you're very verbally intelligent. So you're pretty much stuck with that. Maybe you've got a bit of mania to you too. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. I find relief when I drink alcohol, smoke, or take certain drugs because it slows down my thought process. How can I use my overanalysis to my advantage? Well, I would say find yourself a difficult cognitive problem to solve. You know, pick a challenge, pick a challenge. But, you know, you also might consider, you might consider talking to someone. You find relief when you drink alcohol. That might be, that might be an indication that some of what you're overanalyzing isn't so much a consequence of excess cognitive power, but an excess of, of high negative emotion. And so that would be illustrated in, say, high trait neuroticism. We're going to release the big five aspect scale here later this month, and you'll be able to take that, and it'll give you a pretty good detailed description of your personality. And there's two dimensions of neuroticism, withdrawal and volatility. And, you know, if you're 
overanalyzing because you're, you're um, what do you call that, ruminating, that can be a, a consequence of high levels of anxiety. And the reason I'm suggesting that is because you said you find relief when you drink alcohol. And alcohol is a very powerful an anxiolytic agent, anti-anxiety agent. And so lots of people who have high levels of anxiety do ruminate and so overanalyze, let's say. And they find relief when they drink because alcohol is a primary anxiolytic like Valium, like benzodiazepines and barbiturates. So... The fact that alcohol gives you relief probably indicates that some of what's driving your overanalysis is anxiety. And then you could, um, exercise can really help with that. I would also recommend, this is something really to think about. I don't know what your eating habits are like or your sleeping habits, but if you are an anxious person and that's manifesting itself in say neurotic overanalysis, there's two things you can do very rapidly, three things really, that will help quell that. Um, well, four things even. Number one, get up at the same time every day and i would recommend in the morning because that's when people generally get up and it's good to do what everyone else does unless you have a good reason not to number two eat a large breakfast right keep it carbohydrate light you know don't don't eat to toast and like uh, and fruit loops that's not going to do the trick make it fat and protein heavy and eat more than you want you might say i'm not hungry in the morning it's like this has nothing to do with what you want or what your appetite is it's like you need to eat in the morning if you're an anxious person and you don't eat in the morning and then you stress yourself out your body hyper produces insulin it takes all the blood sugar out of your blood and that dysregulates your metabolism for the entire day you can't reset it till you go to sleep at night and i've had lots of anxious clients who would say fall into the over analytic category who were like virtually cured by eating a large breakfast every morning i would highly recommend that you could try some physical exercise weightlifting is really good for curing anxiety another thing you could do as i alluded to earlier today is to make a schedule and start attending to your daily micro routines so you know you got to figure out what your over analysis is it might be cognitive like maybe you have a very active mind you know you're fast verbally are you fast verbally one way you can find that out is to do something like write down as many letters words as you can that begin with the letter s for example in in three minutes do that with a bunch of your friends and if you're someone who writes down way more words than anyone else then you're verbally fluent and that might be driving some of your over analysis but my guess is that you're suffering from some rumination that's related to anxiety and so I told told you what I think the simplest ways are to rectify that down everything that you're ruminating about I know that seems counterproductive but like see ruminations come up accidentally involuntarily unconsciously Whereas if you write down everything that you're ruminating about, you're facing them voluntarily. So I would say, well, open up a journal or a Word document, whatever, and write down every time you ruminate about something, write it down and write down every rumination you can remember exhaustively, write them all down. 